That 70s show ran from 1998 to 2006 and went on to be one of the most legendary sitcoms of all time. But as you probably know, there are plenty of things that happened backstage during the production of this show that you may not know. Welcome to Trending 10, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about that 70s show. Ready? Let's go ahead and get started. There's a funny story behind the failed spinoff, That 80s Show. Bet you forgot that even existed. Actor Kevin McDonald was walking his dog one day when Topher Grace drove by and McDonald said he was a huge fan of the show. This led to McDonald being brought on to play Pastor Dave. However, after being on six episodes, Pastor Dave disappeared with no explanation. In an interview, McDonald revealed that he believed Pastor Dave disappeared because some of the writers had left to work on that 80s show and the remaining crew forgot all about Pastor Dave, and thus the character disappeared. Ashton Kutcher got his first real career start on that 70s show, but did you know that he was also a model before joining the sitcom? In fact, he was convinced that he was going to be fired from the show after filming the first few episodes. In an interview, Kutcher stated that after filming the first five episodes of That 70s Show, he was expecting to be let go because he was so bad. Later seasons of That 70s Show paid homage to classic rock bands. Season 5's episode titles were dedicated to Led Zeppelin, with titles like Going to California, Ramble On, and Heartbreaker. This went on to become a tradition for the show, as Season 6 honored The Who in the same fashion, Season 7 honored The Rolling Stones, and Season 8 honored Queen. The show went through quite a few name changes in early stages of production. First, it was titled The Kids Are Alright, then it was Feeling Alright, and before the show aired, it was supposed to be called Teenage Wasteland. But then the producers realized that no matter what they called the show, viewers would likely just refer to it as That 70s Show, thanks to the setting. That sparked the idea of just calling it what it literally was, That 70s Show. There was actually a British remake of That 70s Show that ran at the same time as the US one was going on. The British version was titled Days Like These and was produced by the same team as the US version, and it even used the same scripts by simply switching the American pop culture references with British ones. However, after Days Like These premiered in 1999, only 10 episodes were ever aired. Mila Kunis was very young when she was on That 70s Show. But did you know that she actually lied about her age in her audition? At the time of the audition, Kunis was only 14 years old, but the audition required that all actors be at least 18. Kunis told the production team that she would be 18 soon, but intentionally did not say when. After being hired for the show, the producers found out the truth about her age, but still thought she was the best fit for the show, so she was kept on. Speaking of Mila Kunis, did you know that Ashton Kutcher was actually Kunis' first kiss? That's right, Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, who went on to get married and be known as one of Hollywood's biggest power couples, actually met on the set of that 70s show, and Ashton was Mila Kunis' first kiss. Aw, how cute. Actor Topher Grace got his start from his time on that 70s show, but did you know that he was discovered in a high school play? Two creators of that 70s show were going to see their child in a high school production of a funny thing happened on the way to the forum, and the lead of the production caught their attention. At the time of seeing the show, that 70s show was in its early production stages and they were looking for their leads. And as it turned out, that lead in the high school show that they saw who impressed them so much happened to be Topher Grace, and they approached him about their brand new show. The show's theme song went through quite a few different changes before the producers finally settled on a final version. However, the writer of the show still made bank off of it despite all of the changes. Alex Kilton, co-writer of In the Street, the show's theme song, signed a deal that would pay him $70 every time the show was played on the air, regardless of who was performing it. Pretty ironic considering the title of the show. Writer Will Forte had a lot of faith in that 70s show, but apparently not a lot of faith in Saturday Night Live. Forte really enjoyed the writing and producing for that 70s show, but was afraid of Saturday Night Live failing. In fact, he was offered a performing spot on SNL, but turned it down because he didn't want to leave that 70s show and was afraid of SNL failing. But a year later, Forte changed his mind and joined SNL. To roarous applause. But alright, there we go guys, sip our list of 10 things you probably didn't know about the hit TV sitcom, That 70s Show. Got any other 70s facts? Be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe for more great content. But alright, that's going to be it for this one guys, 
Thanks so much for watching Trending Den, your guide to what's viral right now.